Okay, so I have never made a video about Segovia, one of the most famous historic cities in Spain. The reason is simple, fear. I've been afraid that if I try and encapsulate everything that this incredibly rich city has to offer, I will completely and utterly fail. But today, finally, I'm gonna try and tackle it. I'm gonna try and show you what I think would be the perfect day in Segovia. Well, at least the perfect day for me, so that when you whiz up here on the Ave from Madrid, you have a plan. Well, at least you have my plan. So let's hope my plan is a good plan. Roman aqueducts, enchanting castles, towering cathedrals, and juicy suckling pig. There's a lot to see, do, and eat in Segovia. Today, I'm gonna tackle it all with a little help on the eating front from Yoli. And I think the best way to start the day is to take in the city's sights. And as I always say, nothing beats having a great guide. So helping me discover this city is the excellent English-speaking local guide, Elena. Elena. How are you? What are we doing? <laughs> we kick off with Segovia's most famous monument, the staggering 2,000-year-old Roman aqueduct, so perfectly preserved it almost looks like it was a leftover from some Game of Thrones shoot. So what is fascinating about this aqueduct is the construction process. There is no cement between these more than 20,000 granite blocks. They were built using incredible techniques, uh, scaffolding, forceps. That's why you see little holes all over the rocks. Those were the forceps to, to lift the blocks into place. And in the last piece that we'd be put in would be the keystone right at the top of the arch. That panel originally had bronze lettering on it. You can see little holes where it was attached and that bronze lettering had the name of the emperor who built this. And then above it you can see a virgin. So back in the day when this was built it wasn't the Virgin Mary in that little alcove. It was a statue of Hercules. There was water passing across the top here until just a hundred years ago. That's something I find absolutely fascinating that was still in use thousands of years after it was built. From the lookout above the aqueduct, we wind back down towards Segovia's main street, popularly known as the Calle Real, but in reality, it's actually a bunch of streets with different names. Anyway, I'll make sure all these points of interest are mentioned in the description below. So you're gonna walk up the Calle Real and you're gonna see this house, Casa de los Picos, the pointy house. One of the stories is that it was actually a Jewish family that, that lived here and they were sick of it being called the, the house of the Jews. And so they put this facade on so that people would call it something else, the pointy house. I don't know if that's true or not, but nowadays it's a school. Imagine going to school in this building. My school looked nothing like that. And something you're gonna notice while you're walking up the Calle Real and throughout Segovia, are these buildings that have these engravings all over the facade. This is called Esca. Grafiado, a style that you'll see throughout the city and it was a way to give the facade of buildings a little bit of a lift, make them a little more interesting with this kind of engraving. It's very, very beautiful. Here right behind me, this Mudejar, a Moorish style arch. So what that tells us, Elena was telling me that this 15th century building above with this beautiful engraved facade was built on an earlier building that was built in the Mudejar style that had arches like this. The layers and layers and cities like this are just what is so fascinating and why I love having a guided tour because you get to discover all these things that you just wouldn't notice otherwise. While you're wandering up the Calle Real, you want to stop in this beautiful plaza, this beautiful square. Officially, it's called Plaza de Medina del Campo. But as you're learning, there are official names here in Segovia for streets and squares, and there are local popular names. The kind of unofficial name is Plaza de las Sirenas because of a couple of statues that are here from the 19th century. But if you stand here and just spin around like I'm doing, you just kind of soak up the incredible history. You've got buildings from the 15th and 16th century with the Esgrafiado. Up above here, you've got a 14th century defense defensive tower. Behind me there's a 12th century Romanic church with beautiful atriums around it. So just take a moment when you're here and spin around like I'm doing. Don't get too dizzy and just let your mind be blown by the history around you. Next, Elena leads me into the tight knot of streets, which was once Segovia's Jewish quarter. After years of increasing persecution, the city's Jewish population was confined to these narrow winding streets in 1480. And then in 1492, with the order of expulsion, they were forced to convert to Christianity or leave Spain for forever. And here, just at the entry to the Jewish quarter, is what was the old main synagogue. Now it's a Catholic church and has been for hundreds of years, but it's worth going in. It's, it's very beautiful and peaceful inside, and there's still the aesthetic, the architectural aesthetic of a synagogue. Sadly, they wouldn't let us film in there, so you'll have to take my word for it. 
So now while many who lived in this Jewish ghetto, their names are now lost to us, there is one man that we do know a lot about, and his name was Abraham Seneor. He was the chief rabbi, and he was also a really important member of the royal court. But what's really interesting is in 1492, he chose to convert to Christianity rather than be expelled. He thought that that was a better way that he could support his people. And the name he took on, his Christian name was Fernando Perez Coronel. He took on the name Fernando because his godfather was King Ferdinand. That's how connected this guy was, and yet he was still forced to give up his faith. And right alongside the Jewish quarter is Segovia's magnificent 16th century Gothic cathedral. And this cathedral has a really special place in my heart. I have some friends who used to live here in Segovia, right opposite on the top floor of an apartment. And when you would sit on their toilet, through the window you would have a gargoyle right there looking right back at you. If you're like me, cathedrals can be a little overwhelming, so my suggestion is that you focus in on a few interesting details. Elena showed me a few key highlights. Something that's really caught my eye is here in the middle of the course are these four enormous books, this one behind me from the 16th century, and it has musical notes on it and also words in Latin. So this is the music and the songs that the, that the chorus would sing. And something that's fascinating here in the cloisters, you can see the original construction tools that were used to build the cathedral, 16th, 17th century. You've got pulleys and rope, and you've also got something that reminds us of the aqueduct, the forceps that were used uh, to lift the stones. Some things didn't change. <laughs> And then just off the cloister, there is this magnificent room, the chapter house with its gold leaf ceiling and the walls just wrapped in 17th century Flemish tapestries. This is where important people in the, in the church would meet. Behind me, the sculpture here of Christ from the 17th century. Uh, you can just see the pain on his face and the wounds. It's from the Castilian school, which was specifically dramatic. And this is a very dramatic uh, image here. So if I can highlight one thing that you should check out is this 17th century painting of the tree of life. You have the tree of life. You have the sinners celebrating and feasting on top of it. Below it, you have Christ ringing the bell saying, hey guys, watch out. You have death cutting down the tree that supports the people having the, the, the party. And then you have the devil pulling on a rope, waiting at the bottom. And there's a little text at the top of the painting which more or less says in Spanish, God is watching you, watch out for what's coming. If you needed a reminder, you know. So whenever I come up to one of these bell towers in a cathedral, I'm always so afraid that suddenly all the bells are gonna ring and I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall off the tower or something like that. But no, I don't think that's gonna happen. I think they have that organized. This is really worth it. The views are amazing, they're spectacular. The clouds have cleared and you can see the mountains, you can see the, the Alcázar, you can see the fields beyond. Incredible. Next, we wind down quiet streets with fountains and beautiful views towards the famous Alcázar, said by some, and who knows if it's true, to be the inspiration for Snow White's castle. So there's two roads that lead to Alcázar. There's Calle Belarde and Calle Dawit. Probably the most famous one, or the one that most people take, is Dawit. But if you want to come back through a different one, this kind of hidden little street that Elena showed me, it's Calle Belarde. It's beautiful and very medieval feeling. Originally on this site was a Roman fort, then a Moorish fortress, and the first records we find of the castle we see today was the 12th century. When you approach the Alcázar, if you don't suffer from vertigo, I recommend you take a look down into the moat here around, which is massively deep and scary. If you do suffer from vertigo, don't look. Uh, it's never had water in it though, because if you had water in it, it would make it easier to attack the castle. What it has had in it though, are bears. In the 15th century, there were a couple of bears down here at the king's request. He wanted exotic animals down here. So the knight's armor weighed about 20, 30 kilos. Imagine wearing that in battle. And if you were gonna take part in tournaments, you know, as a man, you had to start training as a boy. And so you would wear one of these suits of armor for children that weigh about, say, about eight kilos or so, so you could get used to it. These weren't for actually fighting. The kids didn't fight, but they had to start young to get used to carrying all that weight. Within the Alcafa, we explore rooms laid out as if this were still a royal household full of rich period detail. 
So here in the throne room of the Alcázar, you can see what are actually 19th century replicas of the thrones of the king and queen, the Catholic king and queen, Isabel and Ferdinand. But what I find fascinating is that you'll see in a room like this, you'll see Mudejar artistry and Mudejar design. This is the design that was inherited from the Moors. When you walk into this room, you'll notice the incredible ceiling. This is a replica of the 15th century ceiling. In the mid-19th century, there was a fire here which destroyed uh, the ceiling. And so in the early 2000s, they redid the ceiling using the same techniques and using the same materials. There's about six kilos of gold leaf. And at the end of the visit, you come out into what's called the terrace, and you're right at the front of the Alcázar, the bit that looks from the outside, like the prow of a boat just kind of driving through the waves. It's pretty incredible. Once again, if you suffer from vertigo, this is not a good moment to peer over the edge. So I say farewell to Elena. Her details are in the description if you'd like to hire her as your guide. And I say hola to Yulia and Lucia. Hola. I'm not going to give you a... <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I'm like, yeah. Kiss, Hi, kiss I don't know. I kiss you, fist bump you. <laughs> Good to see you. Hi. Your face is a lot warmer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Yoli, we're here for the famous dish at El Sitio de Patatas Revolconas. Delicious. But Segovia is famous for its salads, right? Exactly. <laughs> I've gotten ready for this is actually a salad. This it's in, a salad? In Segoviano. Yeah, yeah, patatas yeah. Patatas Revolconas <laughs> means salad. Well, I mean, you know, main ingredient is potato, right? So. <laughs> so when I was saying on Instagram that we were looking for tapas bar recommendations in Segovia, and El Sitio, this place, with its famous patatas, Revolconas, was recommended, somebody said to me, but you can't eat tapas in Segovia because you have to eat suckling pig. And I said, look, person, we're going to eat both. Having a tapa, and then we're going for the suckling pig at a famous place. So. Get into that salad. <laughs> This leaf or this other leaf? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting form of lettuce. It's very... Mmm. <laughs> yeah? Mm. Very yummy, very delicious. Soul warming. Oh, yes. Just mm. what I needed with this cold weather. <laughs> Patatas revolconas are actually typical from Avila, I think. But they're potatoes that are mashed up with garlic, paprika, olive oil. I think there's garlic in there. And with big chunks of torretnos on top. Big chunks of, of pork gold. Mm. Ooh. Crackly on the outside, tender and juicy on the inside. With our appetites wetted, it's time for the main event. This is roasting country, and the one roast meal that you need to tackle when you're here is suckling pig. You ordered the salad, I guess? Always. I mean, you know me, you know? I think three salads we're going to have here. Yeah. Trust me, today Yoli is not eating salad. Well, there might be a salad included. We're having the full typical Segovia menu. You may have read, if you've done your research, that there's kind of two famous places for cochinillo in the city. There's Candido and there's Jose Maria. Now, I have it on very good advice that Jose Maria is the place, is the better place. And also, interestingly, Jose Maria, the guy who founded this, actually started working in Candido, and then he founded this in the, in the early 1980s. Now, now it is like a temple to this dish. And for starters, one thing that these guys are known for is they have their own bodega, their own winery, Pago de Caro Viejas, which I always found quite hard to say. It's the kind of wine you want on a nippy day in Segovia when your suckling pig is en route. This is uh, liver, right? Phil, we miss you. Look, look, Phil, learn. Mmm, delicious. <laughs> Judiones de la Granja, as if you were needing food before the suckling pig arrives. But this is a famous stew from this area with big white beans, chorizo. Again, serious food. We're going in. Soul food. Yes. I wish my neck was longer. <laughs> Yeah, I finished my judiones. I actually promised myself that I wouldn't because I knew it would be dangerous given I've had patatas revolconas, judiones, and then the, the big guys come in. Take one for the team. Do it for you guys. Before the main course is served, I get a chance to take a peek into the kitchen and see how Master Roaster Felix prepares dozens of suckling pigs every day. So behind me, Felix, who's worked here for years, is taking the pigs out of the oven. They've been in there for three hours. And what I love about this this, this kind of kind of cooking and this process of cooking, it's so Castilian. These pigs only have salt and nothing else. So what it's all about is the quality of the ingredients, the quality of the pigs. And obviously here at Jose Maria, they have their own farm to raise their own pigs to make sure that they're amazing quality. <laughs> Our food is ready, but first we watch Segovia's most famous gastronomic ritual, where the pig is cut with a plate as a testament to its tenderness.
And no doubt much to Phil's disappointment, here they do not serve you the head of the pig. We just got given a piggy bank, little piglet piggy bank for Lucia, so that she can start saving money. Yeah, same for her college fund. <laughs> okay, I'm going in, I'm kind of full just when the pig arrives. When you cut into it, it's like kind of breaking glass on the outside and then it's so tender on the inside, like the juice that is dripping off this meat. Yes, yes sirree Bob. Oh look, I got an ear. In honor of Phil. These videos are getting repetitive. I keep biting into a, the, the ear of a young pig. <laughs> Yoli, here's your other salad. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. All the salads you can eat. <laughs> and the skin, it's beautiful, man. Music to my ears, this. The crackling. Look, 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 look. Ponche Segoviana, which is such a classic dessert here. It's like a layer cake of sponge with pastry cream and then a marzipan layer, filigree, if you will, on top. I feel like it's the meat equivalent of dessert. Hunky and juicy. Hey, it is good. Look, yeah. at, look at this. Done. And we're going for a walk to continue and to finish our perfect day in Segovia, a special secret spot that I want to show you guys. And I just want to be clear, when I talk about the perfect day in Segovia, it doesn't include Yoli. You don't get Yoli in your day. I get Yoli, but you know, you get your Yoli. I feel like that should be a t-shirt. Find your Yoli, your inner Yoli. Bye-bye. See you later. It's just you and me, guys. And there's one thing you gotta do. Your Ave is leaving soon. You've had your great day trip to Scove. You've seen the history, you've had the food. You gotta go for a walk. And there's a little walk that I once went on that I loved when we were visiting friends here. So let's go. I wind down the stone streets to the Valle del Arroyo Clamores, a gorgeous nature reserve just below the city. And while you're down here, don't miss the short detour to see the fascinating medieval Jewish cemetery. And you can see that residents of Segovia have down here their own little plots of land to grow vegetables. It's a bit sad because it's winter, but in spring and summer, this is just alive. I've seen it before. And imagine tending your garden in the, you know, the base of a medieval city wall. And what I also love about this walk is it gives you a whole different angle on Segovia. You're down beneath the city walls. You're looking up at the cathedral, up at the Alcazar. It's beautiful down here. It's really dramatic as well. I love it. Where have I brought you and why are you here? You're in the Pradera de San Marcos. And I brought you here because of this. This is where you get the whole Disneyland view of the Alcazar, the prow of the ship. Lights up after dark, if you're here after dark, and it's a really romantic spot to end your day. And I wish Yoli and Lucia were here as I say that. But yeah, it's a beautiful place after your big lunch. Let us know guys in the comments, did we have a successful day trip in Segovia? Would you do it like this? And if you're curious about more day trips, more video day trips we've made, check out this playlist I've made down here. Apart from that, hasta luego, and we'll see you in Spain. Ciao.